the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, and the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, so we will be with the Lord forever. See, the reality is we are going to be called up in the air. The reality is the trumpet is going to sound. The reality is things are going to happen. And are we ready? Are we ready for God? Are we really prepared? Are we really striving for excellence? It scares me a lot when I look up. Because what I see Christians being involved in is political nonsense. What I see Christians being involved in is putting a nose in the air and condemning everybody. What I see Christians doing is going out and saying a message that is not necessarily the message of God, but rather the message that they want to get out so they can achieve whatever goal they set for themselves. It's dangerous. It's scary. In Matthew chapter 7, and we talked about it last week when we were talking about judgment, at the end of 21, it starts talking about the people who thought they were saved. Who Jesus looks at and says, Depart from me, ye who work iniquity, I never knew you. That should cause us great pause. It should cause us great concern. And yet it doesn't, because we live in a society that's so fast-paced, that moves, that puts on Facebook, that has a thousand, a thousand and one opinions. I mean, someone can't win a gold medal in the Olympics without somebody saying something negative about it. And the reality is this. Our message is good news. I was talking with my, uh, my uncle on the phone the other day when I was coming back from Nashville, and, and we had a very good, long conversation. I think we spoke for like an hour. And he was like, he's telling me, most of the time you come into church and they tell you all sorts of things about what you can't do. It's always bad. You can't do this, you can't do that. Now bear in mind, I, I do agree that there are things we shouldn't be doing, but the reality is you walk in and all you hear is bad news. And he said, whatever happened to the good news? And the good news is, we can be saved. So the question, do you remember what the question was? <coughs> so what are we saved from? <laughs> we are saved from God's justice. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of... Lord, you know this one, don't you? The wages of sin is death. Now, just in case you, you forgot what the wage means, that means it's a price. And uh, if everybody has fallen short, which Romans 3.23 says, and the wages of sin is death, it means we all have earned death. Not death from Satan, but death from God. We are saved from God's justice. Because God is a just God. He cannot have sin in his presence. You know, one of the things that, that uh, people don't know about me, and it's very strange and odd, and a long time ago I, I could do this. My dad's a smoker. And so when I was growing up, I always smelled like smoke, and I could never figure out why everybody was always asking me for a cigarette. Couldn't figure it out. Like, I've never smoked in my life. I've never even put a cigarette in my mouth aside from the candy cigarettes. And, and I could not ever figure out. People would say, are you sure you don't smoke? And I would look at them dead in the face and be like, no. And then I went to college where I was away from my dad. And then all of a sudden I could start smelling cigarettes. And so one of the smells that just, ah, I can't stand is cigarette smoke. <laughs> Relax. It doesn't stick on everybody. But if I can smell it, it, it makes me want to do that. 
It's hard for me to stand in the presence of people who've been smoking. Now, it sounds very strange. I love my dad, and I don't mind standing next to him. But the reality is that the, the smell just... But the good news is I can stand there. See, the thing about God and sin is God's not going to stand around and let you continue to sin. That's not what a just God does. Think about it. But thank God the price was paid. Do you get the good news? Here, let's go back to the bad news. The good news. Jesus paid the price so we could be saved from God and his justice. Now, I know that sounds a bit strange because we don't, we don't think about that. Because we say, oh, God's a loving God. God's a graceful God. God will let everybody in, but that's not what just means. Just means you serve your due punishment. That's why we have a justice department. The whole point of the justice department is to make people know that they have to serve justice. If someone commits a crime, they must spend the due time. That's what justice is. Let us not take grace so lightly. And I believe so many times we take grace so lightly. We treat salvation as if it's our right. We treat salvation as if, okay, I have it. Now I can be and do whatever I want. It honestly scares me. Because I'm a softie. You know, most people will tell me he's like, he puts on a hard exterior, but on the inside you can melt him. People don't know that about me, but I, I do. I put on that tough exterior. And I'm a very emotional person, and I'm a big softie, but here's the thing that concerns me. God, God knows all truth. God knows all sin. God knows what you did in the corner. God knows what you said. God knows what you thought. God knows what you're going to do. God knows what you're thinking. God knows how you're behaving. God knows everything. And he's a just God. The question is simple today. There will be a response time in just a second. But it's a very simple question this morning. Have you taken God's grace lightly? Have you treated it as if that's my ticket to heaven and I'm good? Because if you have, you might want to recheck that ticket. The altar's open. God calls us to a place of salvation and recommitment, whatever it is you want to call it.